Here comes the rain. That is not where those go, little girl. Pick them up and put them away. Not right there. Hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason Sallier and today as we wait on this storm to pass, I am going to be refitting my great uncle's old splitting mall with a new handle. Uh, this will be the second handle that I put on this thing. It lasted four or five years before it finally got busted and needed to be replaced. Um, so that's what we'll be doing today. So stick around. Now I'm not making a handle from scratch or anything. I went to the hardware store and picked up a, a genuine hickory handle for a splitting maul, for a splitting ax. And they come pretty much ready to go, but generally speaking on these old ax heads or splitting maul heads, they need some modifications to get them to fit just right. Gonna have to pause for audio, I think. It's uh, letting go. Rain on a tin roof, nothing better. Not so good for YouTube videos though. All right, yesterday we got rained out, so we're gonna pick up again today. Um, just couldn't, you wouldn't be able to hear anything with the rain beating on this metal roof. So anyway, um, all I've done is I've just sawed this um, uh, split Kerf, I don't know what you call it, whatever this is called. Somebody in the comments, tell me what that's called. I've cut this a little bit deeper because otherwise our wedge that we're gonna be putting in here would, would have bottomed out. Um, and I'm just gonna do a quick little test fit here and see how it's going to fit. I just tapped it on there gently. And what I'm looking for is basically no space, no gaps right here where the ax head or the maul head meets up with the handle. I want that to be completely closed off and but you can see a small spot here in the back that's a little bit loose that may go away as we pound the um, axe head onto the handle or the handle into the axe head but might need to shave just a little bit off so it'll go a little deeper we just put a cat door in and the girls are training the cat to go through it I don't know if it's enjoying it very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice cat. Push it tolerates all this abuse pretty well. Push it back through. <laughs> Alright, so these handles come with some sort of varnish or polyurethane or whatever coating on them to make them nice and shiny and slick. But basically it's feels like holding plastic and I don't like that. If I want a wood handle, I want a wood handle. Um, if I wanted a plastic handle, I'd buy a Fiskars. So, um, I'm going to sand this puppy down. I already sanded it just a little bit, but I'm going to sand it down and get rid of that varnish because after a few years of use, the handle starts to look something like this. Nice and smoothed out, sanded down by just, just wear and tear. Uh, it's got several coats of oil on it. Um, that's my son riding by on the motorcycle. It's got several coats of uh, linseed oil on it, which I'll be doing to this one as well. But that's what it looks like after a few years, and it's just much more pleasant to use. You hiding from the heat, girl? What you doing under there? Hmm? Hiding? You can see the axe head seats really well around the sides here. Right on the sides. But there's a tiny little bit of space in the front and a little bit of space in the back right there. So what I've got to do is work the sides just a little bit, take a little bit of meat off of it, so the axe head will seat just a little bit deeper. And by doing that, it will close up these ends as well. So I'm gonna make it just a little bit thinner on the sides. This is a four in one wood rasp file. It's flat on one side and rounded on the other, and it's perfect for jobs like this. On these little curved areas, you can take the, the rounded side of the file 
you just get rid of a little bit of material. It doesn't need much. You don't have to take all this time to do something like this. However, if you want your ax head to stay on for years and not work loose eventually, then it's really important to take this kind of step in the beginning and make sure it fits as tight as possible. If you can make that thing fit super tight in the beginning, chances are, and keep adding oil to it, never let it get super dry. If you add oil to it on the regular, um, it, will, it won't work loose on you. Oh yeah, so that's much better. There's still a small, tiny space. Let's see if I can get that to focus in on there. Small little space right there in the back, but it is really tiny. Everywhere else, it fits really almost perfect. Now, what I need to do is I need to cut this off. I'm gonna leave about, I'm gonna leave about maybe three quarters of an inch on top here. Um, and then I'm gonna have to make myself a wedge. I, this, most of the handles, most of the time, the handles come with a wedge and then a little step wedge, a metal step wedge. And this one did, but whenever I buy handles and things kind of like that, I always buy them in twos um, because inevitably you're gonna have to replace one. But this one's been floating around my barn for the past couple years and been moved around quite a few times and the wedge and step wedge have gotten lost. So I will be reusing the step wedge that came out of the axe. I'm just gonna reuse it. And I'll be making a wedge out of the old handle. You can see the grain, the end grain here. I'm just gonna split off this side here and split off this side here until it's the thickness that I want. And then I'll just take a knife and taper it down to a point. All right, now that I've got my wedge prepped, the handle all sanded down, ready for uh, um, putting, that, putting the head on there, I'm gonna put some oil on this portion of the handle because this is gonna be hidden by the ax head itself. And it's gonna be difficult to oil that. I mean, yeah, you can put it down on the top of it and let it sit there for a while. And hopefully it'll soak in through the end grain. But if I'm gonna do it right, if I'm gonna do it, I might as well do it right. So I'm gonna take some boiled linseed oil um, and I'm going to apply a healthy dose, a healthy dose of this linseed oil onto the portion of the X of the handle that's going to be covered up. And I'm also going to oil the wedge itself. In the cut as well. You know what I might do is I might clean this thing up before I put the handle on it. That might make it a little bit easier. Um, and now you're looking at the back of this thing probably thinking, man, look how beat up that is because what my great uncle used to do is he'd use two of these malls. He had two identical um, and he would slam one into a big, when he's only when you needed to, when it was a big round, he'd slam one into the big round and then he'd use the other mall to pound on the, this one and use it as a wedge. 
Um, and that's why they were both real. My dad has the other one. They were both really uh, mushroomed out like this. And I thought about cleaning them up and I thought about grinding it off, but I thought, man, how many wax did my great uncle put into that to get it to look like that? And I just thought it would be kind of a shame to remove his handiwork. Um, so I'm going to leave it as is, but I am going to sharpen it up just a little bit because, you know, when you're splitting on the ground and stuff, you try not to, but you're going to hit the dirt and hit some rocks. So that's about three or four years of abuse right there. Now you don't have to get very picky on the edge on a splitting maul. It just needs to be sharp enough to dig into the wood a bit and allow it to split efficiently. All right, now we have a very serviceable edge on our splitting maul. I got most of the major blemishes out of there from hitting rocks in the ground and things like that. And it is plenty sharp. It's actually probably sharper than it needs to be, but um, it will definitely get the job done. Now I've seen this done quite a few different ways. Um, I've, you know, watched other guys on different videos and stuff seat them different ways. And one of the ways is they take a mallet or a hammer or a, or a stick like this and pound the handle into the head. And that's all fine, you know. But if you've got the end of your um, axe handle rounded off like this, if you've got it rounded off, chances of it splitting off are very slim. So the way I was taught, the way my dad always did it and the way my papa did it is we just tap it on the ground on something firm like this brick over here. Just tap it gently, hitting it flush, try not to hit it at an angle. Tap it gently, but firmly. It doesn't damage the end of your ax handle at all. It doesn't split it off or anything, as long as it's rounded. If it was cut off clean, then you would have some splitting and stuff on the edges, but if it's rounded, no, no issue at all. And then what you're looking for, let's see if I can get you focused here. What you're looking for are those curls. See that curls of wood where the head of the maul is shaving the axe handle just a little bit as it seats on there really securely. And what you want is for that to go all the way around. If you have it all the way around, you know you've got it seated really, really well. Um, I still have a small gap back here in the back, but I don't think that's anything that's gonna cause too big of an issue. I think I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna give it a few more taps try to get that to seat a little bit more, and then I think we'll be in business. Now I haven't even wiped off the excess um, linseed oil off of my wedge. I'm just gonna leave it on there and I'm gonna pound it in, drive it in there all the way down as far as I can get it. And hopefully, I've had this happen to me before where the wedge bottoms out it doesn't give me a full spread like I need, but I'm hoping that's not going to be the case with this one. We shall see. Mm. I think what I might need to do is shorten my wedge a little bit. It looks like it might be getting close. Mm, too close for comfort, that is. So I'm going to shorten the wedge just a little bit. That way I make sure it doesn't bottom out. Ah. Whoops. Trying to hold a camera and saw is a difficult task. That's okay. Little scuff. Little scuff. And that's kind of what we're looking for. I'd like to see even a little bit more swelling at the top, kind of kind of mushroomed out at the top, flaring. But that's pretty good. You can see that it's flared out at the top with our wedge. That worked pretty good. Now what we will do is we will cut this off. I don't like to cut it flush. I like to leave a little bit on the top.
ideally what you have is the wood grain running perpendicular to the um, to the front of the axe here towards the blade. This one is off just a little bit. You see that? It would be ideal if it was perpendicular, but that's pretty, I think that's acceptable. I don't think that's going to be an issue. If you had it turned the other way, if it was turned like this sideways, you would you would break your, your axe handle much more readily. So you always want to have the grains running towards the front, towards the bit of the axe or the maul. Um, and then my split wedge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it um, perpendicular to the wood grain. Just like that. Get it just right, right in the middle. That went way off to one side for some reason. Um, you can see what happened there. So the wooden wedge spreads the handle apart in this fashion here and, and hugs the sides of the axe head here. The, the metal wedge spreads it this way, the step wedge spreads it this way, and locks everything in in that direction. Not the prettiest job I've ever done in my life. Kinda actually bothers me a lot, <laughs> but we're a little bit committed at this point. Well, there it is, the finished product. It's not my best work, but it will definitely do. Last me another half a decade or so. Um, I'm usually pretty cautious with the wooden handles like this on the splitting mall, and I'm pretty careful. I, what happens is I have friends and neighbors and stuff come over and they, they're helpful and want to want to be genuinely helpful and split wood up. But, you know, they just don't know what goes into putting a new handle in these things. So, so but that's okay. Um, let's give it a shot and see if it stays, uh, stays snug. Here's a dried out knotty piece of oak. That ought to be a good test to see if we did a good job. <laughs> Look at that. Man, that is. There we go. So not too long ago, I purchased this, this Fisker splitting axe. It weighs probably half as much as the, uh, the old splitting mall. And it's got this, you know, polymery, plasticky handle. And a lot of people give it flack because, oh, if you break it, you can't replace it. Um, and I get that. That's, that's absolutely true. If this broke, I couldn't fix it. But, man, I have purposely tried overstriking this thing on big logs before big rounds and it will not break it is a sturdy sturdy handle and you're just you're not going to break them i mean i guess if you really 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 tried and pried on it really hard wedged it on something super heavy and put all your weight behind it you might be able to break it but just normal use i don't think you ever will um however with that said using it it's i just don't enjoy using it as much it's got this plasticky feel vibration in the handle just kind of, I don't know, something like this, just a linseed oiled, hickory handled, old hundred year old head splitting mall that my great uncle had. I just, I like using this so much more. Um, and I think there's just something to be said about that. But anyway, it hasn't worked free. I think we did a good job. It's gonna be on there for a long, long time. And uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and leave us a comment. Today's comment is going to be What is your favorite kind of dog? Leave that in the comments. See ya. And what I'll do when I put some oil, I'll pour it around the head, like that. 
And then if there's any gaps at all, I'll let it run down in there. I don't, there's no gaps at all. It's a teensy tiny one there in the back that doesn't even go all the way through, just, just right here at the very end. Um, I'll let that soak in there for a while. Just let it sit for five, 10 minutes. And then I'll do the same thing on the top of the X. On the end grain right here, I'll do exactly the same thing and let that really, really soak in and it will help spread out that material. Um, a lot of old timers I've heard, you know, soak their tool handles in water and stuff, you know, to make sure that they swell up and stay tight. But you can do the same thing with oil and the good thing with the oil is it doesn't evaporate um, and it will stay in there.